welcome our viewers to WTM TV to a special edition of our Sabbath School because we've been studying the Sabbath School from lesson one and for this quarter, which is caption making friends for God. This is the last lesson, lesson 13. So we Amen. hope you enjoy yourself and we thank the Lord also for how far He has brought us. I will take this opportunity and introduce my fellow panelists who will be helping with the discussion of the lesson. Esther, how are you? I'm fine by God's grace and you. I'm fine. Right. I'm, right. I'm also good by God's grace. Yeah. I'm happy to see you smiling because it means when we take the word of God on ourselves, God will bless us in no small way. Before we proceed and move on to the lesson, you bow our heads and you uh, let our brother by Buama lead us in a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity once again. It's time for your people to study your word. We pray and ask for heavenly wisdom, Amen. heavenly understanding, and also heavenly discernment <coughs> and heavenly knowledge. Please, we also pray that you grant us the Holy Spirit Amen. to understand your word and above all the strength to put them into practice, Amen. as well as our viewers out. We thank you for listening to our prayers in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. We welcome our viewers once again to today's lesson. The lesson is lesson 13 and it's caption a step in feet. A step in feet. I think the lesson is about all said and done. What are you supposed to do? And what practical steps can we take to be rare people who are making friends for God, not in the theoretical sense, but in the practical sense. So uh, by over the lesson, like this is the thirteenth lesson, what has struck you most considering all the lessons we've been studying so far? Alright. I've been asked to make friends for God. And one interesting part is where the demonic person who people regard as not perfect or right, he was the one God used to minister first unto others. And it has touched me very well. Mm. I've also realized I can also <coughs> take the fly to others by what Christ is doing in my life each and every day. Thank you for sharing with us. Esther. Okay. So throughout the lesson, I got to understand that Christ sees people through a special eye mm. of which he sees that everybody is capable of being saved Everybody is exposed to the gift of salvation. Therefore, I'm not in the right position to judge somebody. The person <coughs> isn't able to be saved by God's grace. So I think that this particular lesson is having an impact in my life. And on a special notice that I can't judge somebody that the person is too wrong or too bad to come to Christ. And I think it's helping me. Yeah. Um, I mean, thank you for sharing so with this understanding, I think today's lesson will kind of push us and give us more equipment so as we can be effective witnesses for Christ. Today's lesson is just about the fact that Christ has sacrificed for us by paying the price for our redemption. And in like manner, we should also go out there and sacrifice for others in bringing Christ uh, to, to Christ. Him. Like as we were like strangers as it were, and we were made to have fellowship with him when he died on the cross. Let's uh, look at our key test, or uh, an important test here that I think will kind of help open up the lesson for us. Philippians, let's start with that verse. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 11. 2, 11. Yeah, Philippians <coughs> verse 5 to 11. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 11. Let's listen to the word of God. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also had 
highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in the heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Right. Yes. How do these verses reveal the heart of Christ thinking? And the pattern that Gavin is in Thailand. Christ came to die for our sins. Mm. And that is a wonderful gift he has given to each and every humankind. He was a king in his glory. Mm. He had all that he wants. He commands and it happens. But in this way, he said I should come and die for the sins of humankind. And he did that to save you and I. So we live all because of the death he came to die. And if that is so, then we also have to have faith in him. Yeah. And always come to him, put our request, ask forgiveness of sin, and give glory to him and his father. So, amen. Amen. Is there anything to Okay, so we can see from the passage that Christ, upon all the greatness he had in heaven, upon all the lordship he has in heaven, he, he, he forsook all of, all of them and he came to our uh, earth to die for us. In our normal times or in our daily lives, we think that when we are exposed or when we have the opportunity to get to the truth, we use that as an opportunity to look upon others we try to let them we try to belittle them because we know more than they do so this lesson is trying to let us understand that christ who was righteous who was a god who, who is and who was a god came to die for us not taking into consideration his lordship and any other thing that he had he came to die for us because we needed somebody to die for us so we as Christians are supposed to imitate what he did without looking down upon people because they aren't exposed to the truth and also trying to belittle them because of the faith they have found themselves in. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So as we been all been saying, the essence of Jesus' thinking was self-sacrificial love. Because from the Philippians that we read, the state he was in and the way he humbled himself to take a lower state and the, even the manner of death he experienced what he went through it all talks about uh, an overpowering commitment to save others because we know that in any stage or at any stage of his redemptive way he could have just stopped that I came to die but I think the agony and the pain and, and, the, uh, and the hardship is too much so the lesson, among other things, is trying to encourage us to imitate that sacrificial uh, yeah, love of Christ as Christ. we go out uh, as witnesses. We can't sit here and say that it won't cost us anything. Mm -hmm. It will, in one way or the other, cost us anything. And the lesson went on to give us examples of people who, like us, who, when they accepted the call of Christ, had to make radical uh, sacrifices and decisions in order to be effective witnesses for Christ. So we first look at uh, Matthew. We look at a scenario in Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 to 20. Right. I would like you to take that first for us. Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 to 20. Okay. I'm reading from Matthew 4, verse 18 to 20. I read. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nests and followed him. Amen. Amen. This test is serious. <laughs> And it's, 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 it's very powerful because mm -hmm. they went out on a certain day as fishermen. And I think by the time they got to their house, their meals <coughs> and their occupation have changed. And the, 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 the reason or what brought about the change is that they met a man. And the man told 
them that they should leave their nest and follow him. And from that on, they had a change of occupation, a change of work. But my question is, why do you think Peter and John were willing to make such a radical commitment to follow Christ? You see, before you make a move in every aspect of your life, there is always a reason. It means you've seen something, you've heard something. That is why you're making the move. And this, this was what happened over here. Peter and John met Jesus Christ. They were busily fishing. But unfortunately, at that time, they didn't even have fishes. They were still struggling to catch them. But you see, because they have heard something about Christ already, when Christ got there, and Christ also acted there, so if I have seen and heard about this man, and he has come to perform this, or he has come to do this, he has come to say this, then it's true that I will get something from him if I'm to follow him. So this idea pop up uh, has allowed us to know that they had known him in their previous days. Yeah, they have known something about Christ. Yeah. So when Christ got there and told them to follow him, to become fishes of men rather than fishes, fishes of fishes. Yeah. They have to follow. Let's let's read Matthew chapter nine. Esther, help us with that verse. Matthew chapter nine, verse nine. Matthew chapter nine, verse nine. And as Jesus passed forth from hence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the recipient of custom, and he said unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. Amen. Amen. Again, Esther, what do you see in this passage that is quite remarkable? Okay. Um, from the passage, you can see that when the call came to Matthew, he didn't ask any question. He didn't give any excuse. He just followed him. I think if it were to be myself and any other person, we'd have asked, why should I follow you? What can you give to me? Or what are the intentions you have for me that you are telling me to follow you? But you see, in the settings of um, Matthew's era, the tax collectors were tagged as bad people because yes, yes. yes because they were they were trying to collect people's money um, right way wrongly and rightly. They were taxing the people anyhow, and they they were using other means to get people's wealth for themselves. Yeah. So the people didn't like the task collectors. Mm -hmm. So Matthew was like, why is it that a sinful being as I am, why is it that a person that has been tagged as sinful is being called by Christ? Mm -hmm. So he got to know that Christ was laughing and he could love him as sinful as he was. Mm -hmm. So when the call came, he, he had assurance that Christ has something better for him, and he followed him. Yeah, it's like today we're going to call somebody from a BGRA, and <laughs> like you tell the person, stop whatever you are doing, follow me. And you see, um, one, one man met Jesus Christ, one rich man, yeah. who wanted to obtain <coughs> salvation. Yeah. And what Christ told him was that he should go and obey the commandments. He quickly said, oh, for that one, 100% it has been done. But then Christ continued by saying he should go and sell all, he should go and give all the riches he has to the poor and come to take the cross and follow him. Over there, there was a change of mood. You see, it is just like this. You are working. What will your, your, your family members eat? You've been probably, you are the one feeding your family members. But now Christ come to tell you, Master, Stop what you're doing and follow me. Yeah. You ask yourself, then what about my family? What are they going to eat? Yeah. Yeah. That, so mm -hmm. you see that the work we are doing, or we being committed to Christ, to so winning, to so winning, is something different, and we shouldn't expect positive things only. Okay. It can be harsh, it can be bad, it can be good, it can be calm or whatever, just be committed to the work. But uh, um, after everything, 
we have been promised of a wonderful kingdom yeah. where it wouldn't be on earth but yeah. rather somewhere we have never been before and we are all hoping for that yeah, yeah. and i think as we are, we are saying in one way or the other we all been called to sacrifice something yeah. for jesus it may be sacrifices your convenience anything it, it comes in many forms and i think the lesson is tr trying to deepen our understanding or make us aware of the fact that it's, it's part of so winning and it's part of the the fact that we have accepted the call of jesus to be so winners we, we can't get it out and the examples we are getting here goes further to emphasize that point that for example matthew left his work and the lesson also emphasized the point again that like peter and john and Matthew, we have all been called to make sacrifices for uh, christ that's like you wanted to say something okay so from this commitment call that you are talking about you can see that all these people who responded to the call moved from their convenient areas to sacrifice a whole lot in their life for christ this is trying to bring into our mind that whilst we are being called to follow Christ, it's not all about good deeds mm -hmm. that is going to happen on our, in our way. Sometimes you think that as Christians or as followers of Christ, we should be receiving the good things in life mm -hmm. so that those who aren't Christians will receive the bad things. But that, sh that shouldn't be the case. Mm -hmm. We should know that our core of commitment is always about sacrifices. Mm -hmm. And these sacrifices, in one way or the other, is going to cause us to move from a convenient area to a non-convenient area. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you very much for that wonderful contribution. So, as we've been saying, at times, like where you just ended, at times we Christians, we mama and complain <coughs> a lot. In the least inconvenience. Yes. Like, at times, if we blame God, why? Why, why me? Why me? Or why is this man who is not even worshipping you? It seems like everything is going well with him or her. But for me, it's like everything <laughs> is uh, down. I think the lesson among other things is trying to correct that misunderstanding. That as we decided to be followers of Christ and in a more meaningful or special way, as we decided to be witnesses, inconveniences and hardship and sacrifices are bound to happen to us and i want us to go back to the lesson and really treat the the caption the caption is a step in feet and as we are obviously saying all said and that if we don't move in feet there's no way we can be effective witnesses for Christ because at any point in time there will be inconveniences there will be hardship there will be problems that may check our progress our willingness to um, witness for Christ. But as the early, earlier disciples did, if we are willing, Christ will also make us willing so that we can be better and effective witnesses. But though there are sacrifices involved in so winning and witnessing, but at the end of the day, we get our lives being transformed and being changed. The lesson also made mention of the fact that uh, most of the time our activities or what we do for Christ is as a result of our love for Him. And that though we are supposed to take a step of faith, but with that love, it, 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 will, be, it will be to no avail. And we are giving a test to read in John chapter 21 verse 15 to 19. In summary, the, the passage was about the conversation of Peter with Christ, where after Peter has denied Christ after the resurrection. He met Peter and he commanded him that he should go about feeding the sheep. And he did that. In fact, the, the, before that, he said, he asked Peter, do you love me? It was three times. And why do you think Jesus Christ pointed me? Asked Peter those questions. And the fact that he did it three times. Um, Christ did that, first of all, to affirm the point he's making as well as what Peter is also talking about. You see, the studies gives us a clear understanding that this was a divine love activated, not passive. So he was, he repeated, he repeated these things so that Peter will really understand as 
the more he repeats, the more he thinks through. So you see, even with the third one, Peter was a bit, he was, uh, he was mm -hmm. repeated, yes, yes. Brief, because first, first of all, you ask him, he said yes, second, yes, and the third one again. So over here, he did that three times, and just for him to affirm what he's talking about. He probably mean, might, didn't know what the journey entails, yeah, yeah. because Christ knew that he repeated it three times, yeah. and this man also stood firm, yeah. and by God's grace, was able to embark the journey yeah. to witness to others. Yeah. It's, it's very true, and it's very interesting also that the only requirement that Jesus wanted to ascertain from Peter for discipleship and for so many was that, do you love me? So as the lesson is drawing attention to it, comes down to love. Because if you have no love for the master or for the savior, no matter what uh, other things that may encourage us for some time, it will get to a point in time that you can't go the full length of, of the work committed to us. And with this idea of uh, love's commitment, or with this idea of love, let's read John chapter 21, verse 18 and 19. John 21, verse 18 and 19. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou graded thyself, and walkest whither thou shouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whether thou wouldest not. This speak he, signifying, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, Follow me. Amen. Amen. What did Jesus tell Peter about the cost of discipleship? And by further, why do you think Jesus revealed something so startling to Peter at this point in his life? Just for him to realize what he was going to do. He repeatedly asked him, as I've said earlier, yes. he repeatedly asked him so that, you see, when you are talking to someone and the person keeps on asking you the same question, you see, you, 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 to be aware. Yes, you have to be aware of the questions he's asking you and the answer you're also giving yeah. Yeah, in return. Yeah. You have to know that it is very serious and so important to the person with regards to your answer you are giving to the person. So Christ knew what, was, what he will, uh, Peter would go through. That is why he kept on asking him. And what, what, what was he going to go through? You see, he taking his cross upon his neck and following Christ is not an easy journey as we've discussed earlier on. So Christ wanted him to affirm that. this man has he had already rejected some questions asked him about Jesus some time ago. Yeah, yeah. He was asked three times. And over here too, Christ is also asking him three times. So it means if you have been asked three times upon certain questions, it means it is so key that you should be very careful how you deal with these issues. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh -huh. so to, to, thank you for the contribution. To further add to what you were just saying, so he, even from the onset of his work as a disciple, he was made to understand what it entails yeah. by the cost, uh, so that he may weigh whether he will be willing to go the oh, full end or not. And it's very comforting in, to us here that the Christ we are following doesn't lie about anything to us. He tells us the conditions for following him and the cost for doing disciple or for doing discipleship. And the fact that uh, he always deals with that plainly, that though he is inviting us to be disciples, he also makes us aware of the cost and the responsibility aspect of being a disciple. We will take our last uh, verse for this study, for today's study, and that's First John chapter 3, verse 16 to 18. First John chapter 3, verse 16 to 18. Like, uh, no, Esther, take that. Okay. 1 John chapter 3, verse 16 to 18. 
hereby perceived we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath his word good, and seeth his brother have need, and shattered up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Amen. Amen. What advice that we don't give to believers in this <laughs> So we can see that um, John is trying to draw to our attention that the mere fact that we are saying we love somebody isn't enough. Saying that you love somebody isn't enough, but showing it in action, doing something for it to prevail that yes, you truly love the person. The test said that if you see that your brother is in need of something and you shut your, your compassion from him or her, what is the love that you proclaim you have for that particular person? Therefore, if we proclaim we love Christ, we should let actions follow. What are we doing so that people will see that truly we love Christ? It's about the sacrifices we are making and it's about obeying his commandments as he said. So if we love God, if we love our neighbors, if we love anybody, we should let actions follow as and John gave the advice. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Esther. Thank you very much. And my last question for this lesson goes to my dear brother, Bai. What can we do to be motivated as we go about making friends for God? Like, is there something we can do? There are a whole lot we can do. That is why we have been asked to make friends for God. And so what are some of those? There are a whole lot we have studied throughout this um, okay. quarter from the lessons we have. We have seen that we have to exhibit love. L one thing we have to keep in mind is that love does everything. So we begin with the love for the person so that we can win his heart and add the good message to that. And when we do that, we are going to help the person. We will bring the person to God or Christ so that he become a friend to God whilst we are also friends with God as well. Yeah, thank you, thank my you. brother, for yeah. that wonderful contribution. And it's been a pleasure having the opportunity to spread the word of God with you and with our viewers out there. As we bring our lesson to a close, we will ask our dear sister Esther, we are praying. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful for such an opportunity for us to be enlightened in your word. We thank you for the understanding. We thank you for the message you've given unto us. We pray that give us strength to love our neighbors. Give us strength to win souls for you. Give us strength to be witnesses. And give us strength to take a step in our faith and make decisions to follow you. We pray that you be with us. Even as we end our lesson, continue to bless us in Jesus' name we pray. It. Amen. 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 To our viewers out there, we thank the Lord very much for you having patience with us through the various lessons we've been having here. It's our prayer that you'll be blessed by having the opportunity and the time to study the Word of God with us. Until we come your way again, as we'll be entering another lesson altogether. We pray that God be with you and that God shower his blessings upon you. Amen.